All right, so we are on part three of creating a custom connector in Domo. Um, before we hop in, I wanna reiterate the first two steps. So we explored the API docs, we tested and documented all that we found in Postman, we figured out pagination, authentication, all that great stuff. Now we're actually gonna hop into the Domo development IDE and we're gonna create the custom connector and the logic that'll loop through the API to pull our reports for the companies, contacts and deals from our HubSpot API. Um, starting off, I just want to talk first about a couple high-level overview points. The first is to make sure you save your work like a maniac because the IDE is very buggy. Sometimes it'll log you out at the most inconvenient times. And so we'll hop in and I'll show you, but you're going to want to save as much as possible. I can't tell you how many times I've worked on a connector, built something, and then it logs me out and I have to go and redo it again. Second thing, have the reference documentation up on another screen. This is going to contain the libraries of special methods that, they, that you'll be able to call. Um, since you can't import third-party ones. In this case, what I do is I always have it up where um, I'll link this in the video, but there is this custom connector reference where it shows all the different custom methods that they give you. And so we'll talk about quite a few of these in the video, like magic parse and authentication and all that great stuff, adding request headers to the HTTP request. But what you, what you need to know is that you really can't, you can't pull in any um, libraries that you're used to and you have to code in JavaScript. And so in this case, that's, that's kind of a limitation with the connector IDE. But again, um, I always just have this reference up. I constantly look at it every single time. Like I always forget about how these methods work, how these properties are. And so I definitely recommend that you use two screens when you're building your connector. The third thing is that this is funny. I would honestly consider developing part of your script in a different IDE, such as VS Code, if you're more comfortable. The reason because with this connector IDE, there are some limitations. There's not like syntax highlighting or autocomplete. And so if you're used to that stuff and you are a JavaScript developer, I would highly re recommend you open up uh, VS Code, you know, maybe do some, do it like your API testing and all the logic in, in VS Code. And then once you're ready, put it into the um, IDE and start building the connector. So that's the high level. Let's, let's jump into it though. We're going to start developing in our IDE. And so I'm going to come here and I am on developer.domo.com. And I clicked the, here, let me come back here. I clicked the build your own connector. And now I'm gonna click build now. And we are just gonna walk through this. And so in this case, I'm gonna put in my Domo uh, instance name. And we're gonna create a new connector. We'll create a data grid connector and we'll call this HubSpot before create. And so now it's gonna spin up the connector and this might take a sec. Okay, so now it pops us up on this custom connector screen. And so now what we do is we'll put in the author name and the funnest part is making sure you have the right images. And so this is just a quick tip. This is kind of silly. You have to make sure that whatever images you put for the connector, it has to be exactly these uh, pixels. And so it will reject it if you don't have the right pixels. So I'm just gonna go find some pictures real quick. Okay, so now I have all the pictures. And in this case, you can see there's a green border around this. If um, the the picture wasn't the right pixel size, you, you would see a red banner and it wouldn't let you um, submit the connector. And I can't tell you how many frustrating minutes I've spent trying to find the right size or resizing things. So just kind of funny. But now I'll click save. Like I said, I always save repeatedly when I'm on this connector IDE. So now we're going to code to next and we're going to configure our user authentication. So this is where I talked about before with our uh, script here. Um, we're going to authenticate with the API and make sure we get back a 200 response. And this is, this is going to be used on the section where when you're using a connector in Domo, it's this credentials up here. So, you know, sometimes you'll add an API key or OAuth. This is, this is the part that we're going to configure right now. And so I'm going to come back here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an API key as our method. And then I'm going to come here and copy my API key from Postman. We'll copy this real quick. Then in here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start our authentication script. The first thing I like to do is always um, make sure I understand what environment variables we have available. And so in this case, if I do domo.log, um, I can go metadata. If I run the script, it'll show, it'll bring back this object that shows all the different, um, all the different metadata for my account. And so in this case, I have an API key on an account object. And so if I wanted to pass my API key, I can go here, account.api key and run script and it should pass back our API key, awesome. And so now um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna make sure that um, 
something that Domo always asks you to do is they want to make sure that whenever you put in user input data, they want to test to make sure that there isn't anything malicious in there. And so the way they do this is they usually ask you to do a regex, regex expression. And so in this case, this regex expression here is saying it can only be an alphanumeric characters, including a slash or sorry, not a slash, a dash. Because if we come back here to our um, authentication token, we can see it's alphanumeric and it has a dash. And so we're not, um, you know, this should scrub out anything that's malicious, such as like backslashes um, or things like that. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to write, we're going to make our authentication script where basically we're going to call out to the API and use it. We're going to pass the API key that the user gave us. And if we get back a 200 response, we're basically telling Domo, hey, you know, we're good to authenticate. Um, and so let's just do that real quick. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some headers to um, our HTTP request. And I'm going to paste them in here. But basically, um, like I said, this is actually, you'll, you'll find this in the documentation reference. But basically, to add headers to our HTTP request, it's just the this dot add header. And in this case, I always add this first one, except application that slash JSON, I find it to be helpful. And then the second one is where we add our bearer token, right? And so this is following the authorization method that we found from Postman, um, you know, while we were exploring the API docs. And so now that we have those, what we're going to do is we're going to actually make a uh, variable called res, and we are going to do an HTTP request. And we are going to dot get, and we're going to put in an endpoint. And so in this case, I'm going to take the endpoint from my postman and we're going to do the authentication endpoint that we have here. So let's copy this over and paste that in and awesome. Okay, cool. So now, um, again, sometimes it'll, it'll, it'll flag you for not putting semicolons. So I'm going to put some semicolons there. I'm going to demo dot log my response real quick. And so, um, I don't think I talked about it, but domo.log, this is how it's similar to similar to a console log, but basically this is what it'll it'll bring back um, our output to this little window right here. And so if I domo.log it, we should get a res back. So let's see. Cool. Right. So we are getting um, a res back, a result back. And actually, if I want to get the HTTP status code of that, um, we can do something here. Let's do another. Let's do, let's actually change this to... Um, What's it called? HTTP request its status code. And let's see what that status code is. Did it 200. Cool, 200. Awesome, right? So now we know that this is going to authenticate properly. We put in the API key. And so now all that's left to do is, um, like I said, Domo likes to make sure that um, you're checking your input so that there's nothing malicious in there. And so the way they like to do this is um, basically they like to do a, a set of if statements. And so I'm just going to copy and paste this in real quick. Okay. So I'm going to go over this real quick. Um, this, um, you know, what I've added here is basically a couple things. First of all, there is this method called dot test where um, it'll take the um, regex that you have here and then test it to make sure that it matches according um, that it matches what you've put in the API key matches the regex and there's nothing malicious in there. And in this case, um, I have an if statement where if, if it did catch something, it would give us this auth that authentication failed. And it'll say, um, it'll give you that, you know, that error that we're all used to where you're trying to authenticate with a connector and it doesn't work. And again, this right here, this is in the docs. What I do is um, I always have this open, right? But in this case, we have an authentication success and failure. And you can put in your own custom error message to show in the IDE. And so I'll show you real quick where um, if I run this, um, we will see down here on either authentication successful or failure, right? And so in this case, that's the successful script. If I put in something like, let's say I put in an extra character here that is a backslash, we should see this fail. Yep. And in this case, right, it's saying that it's failure. And so maybe th maybe I could be a little more descriptive here, but let's let's take that back and run the script again real quick just to make sure we get an authentication successful. And we don't. Let's see. I'm just going to copy this real quick. Okay, so we got the API key again. Awesome. Um, the second thing is there's another if statement in here where it's tech checking the get status code and if it equals 200. And in this case, I put three um, equal signs for JavaScript to determine, um, you know, it's, it's for a comparison operator. And if it's successful, this is where it gives us the authentication, authentication successful. And if it's not, like let's say the API token is expired, then it'll give us, an, again, another authentication failed. 
right? So if I, if I, it, let's say I put in here like test one, two, three, it would pass the uh, regex expression. But if I run the script here, we'll, we'll see a different failure sign. And so if I run that, the API key is invalid, please try with a valid API key. So, um, yeah, I think this part here is, is pretty straightforward. I think the biggest learning I found from here is um, third-party connector support will ask you to do this regex thing. So that's very important. Um, getting the status code, that's basically the only test you need to do for the authentication. Um, you know, these are the different authentication methods. Username and password is pretty simple. OAuth, API key, um, custom. These are all different methods that you can do. Um, if you have any questions, definitely take a look at these docs. I think, um, for example, with basic authentication, there can be some tricky things where you have to base encode. Um, you have to base encode the uh, username and password. And so there is a function here that you can call a domo function. Like I said, you can't bring in your own ones. And so you'll have to use a domo function to, to base encode it and then pass it as a header or a parameter. Um, but that's basically the authentication part. Now let's go to selectable. Um, now we'll, we'll create some reports. And so now I'll save and I probably have not been saving as much as I should and click next. And in this case, this report section here is if we come back to a connector, this is right here where once you've authenticated, you can click this question mark and this is, these are all the different reports that you can get from a connector. And so that's what we're gonna be making is this drop down right here basically. And so I'm gonna come here and we are gonna create reports for all the different um, endpoints that we have. So we'll do companies, contacts, and deals. And so we'll just come in here and type company, add report, contacts, report. And so now if I click save and click next, our reports will show up here in the bottom. Um, we'll be able to select a report and actually run the report. And so we'll have a data processing script and we can select the, all the different reports. And so we'll be doing this um, right now. This is this will probably take the bulk of the rest of the time of the video. Okay, so now this is where the magic happens with the connector. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna process the data in our connector so that we can put it push it to um, Domo and then use it later. And so in this case, I always like to scaffold out my um, connector, which would mean basically like I'll just add in comments. So in this case, right, we'll define variables at the beginning. We will determine the report type. Again, is, is this right here? So we have three different reports. We'll determine which report we're doing. We will um, we'll create a handler function for processing data. And then finally, we will, uh, in this function, let's actually do a couple sub things here. In this function, we are going to call API. And we're gonna call the API. We are going to um, loop through the API and push to the, push the data set. And we're gonna use the magic parse for that. So those will be two sub things in that handler function. And finally, we will call function and process data. So that, that's kind of like, I always like to scaffold out my uh, connectors in this way. And so now what we'll do is I'll just explain each step, each part of, the, of this different um, function of the code that I'll be doing. Okay, first up, I always like to define my variables. And so, um, you know, these are kind of global variables that I'll put at the top of my, um, at the top of the code. And one thing I've noticed, sometimes the uh, IDE doesn't like you using the let statement. And so sometimes like, you know, if you'll encounter errors, I would recommend maybe changing your lets to vars. And so in this case, I'm using var to declare my variables. But in this case, I'm getting the API key from my account metadata, the limit of the API. Um, I'm creating a couple empty objects that I'm gonna use later on. And then also I'm declaring my headers right now. And so in this case, I'm I'm adding my bearer tokens so that I, I can authenticate with the API. And then, like I said, I always add this application JSON uh, just to be careful. Next, we come to determining the report type. So in this case, there's also a metadata.report that you can call and it'll return back whatever is um, whatever's currently selected. And so if um, I can show you real quick here, if I domo.log the current metadata.report and then click run, it'll return back contacts over here. Um, oh, and it's because, let's see, metadata, run the script, and we will get back contacts. If I change it to companies, we'll get companies. Awesome, cool. So in this case, um, I basically have a switch statement here, which is very similar to an if statement, but basically it's just determining what the user put in. So if they put in deals, we're gonna set this object variable to deals. And what's like that is what what that's going to do is actually um, it, when we're 
calling the handler function, it's going to pass in the correct uh, API path. So in this case, you know, HubSpot APIs are pretty simple. If we come back to our Postman collection, we can see that the only difference with the endpoints is actually um, after object, the name of the object is here. And so, right, so in this case, this is going to make it very easy for us to easily change our uh, connector based on what report is chosen. Um, so that's helpful, right? So in this case, once, um, you know, we have our variables, we have the report type, now let's create the handler function. And I always do this as a two-step process. Before creating a loop, I always like to make sure that I can correctly pass the data to Domo correctly, and then I'll do the loop afterwards. So in this case, um, you know, we'll just take an example with our companies. Let's create a quick, um, let's try and push this to Domo. Okay, so in this case, what I'm doing is I'm creating a URL of the object path, and I am passing in our object, which we we found from our switch statement, putting in our limit as well, which is 100. And this, maybe I didn't need to create a variable. I like to just in case maybe something changes with the API later. And in this case, we are, we are using our HTTP request.get, and then we are parsing through it, and then using this magic parse JSON, which you can find in the developer docs over here. It's really handy because basically what it does is um, you know, as we saw here, this API is pretty straightforward. When we send a request, we'll get back an array of uh, an object that says results. And then in this is an array of objects. And so in this case, um, if it's not too nested, you can just call this JSON, this magic parse property. And what it'll do, if I run this script real quick on the companies, it will show how it spits out, um, you know, without me doing too much work at all, it actually creates column headers for me and then passes it to, um, passes the data to the columns. So this is super helpful. I would definitely recommend like, if um, if you can definitely use this magic parse JSON, um, there's also a couple other methods like CS like magic parse CSV. But if you if you um, if your API is too complicated, that means you'll have to create your own columns and sort, and so that's a little bit more difficult. So we won't cover that in the tutorial today. But anyway, I'm just going to test this a couple more times. Where um, let's try contacts and see if our script runs properly, and we will get some contacts. Awesome, and these look pretty good. Awesome. So in this case, right, this right here. This handler function is not complete yet. We haven't made it a function. And then we also um, haven't looped, like, haven't created a loop to loop through it. And so I, that's what I'm going to do real quick right now. So now we've wrapped it into a function. And basically what I've done is um, I created a parameter in the function where the object is going to be the parameter. And so that will change based on the report type. And then it'll pass the object to the API. The API is going to do this. Um, the code is going to do this do while loop. And um, this right here, I, I probably won't cover this very much because it really depends on the API. But in this case, like we talked about, there it, there was a variable at the end of our API called um, next that was a paging function. And so when this, um, I, I kind of figured out that once this API, like once there's no longer any more data, this will show up blank. And so that's actually pretty handy because what we can do is we can do while um, while there is still a URL or while the, while this variable still shows up, this link, it'll keep on processing. But I have a try catch statement here, so if an error happen, if um, if it doesn't get anything back, we're going to set the URL to false, and that'll that'll let us exit our function. And so I'll, I'm going to put this code up on GitHub so you can take a look at it as well. Um, in this case, like I, this part right here, can take some time. Um, I think the learnings that I get from this is definitely using the magic parse is a good property to do. Um, figuring out how to loop through the API very important. And then once you're done with that, we're just going to call the function and process the data, right? So in this case. Um, we have to call our function, and this is the last step of our data processing script. So I'm just going to come in here and say process data, and then click object. And so now what I'll do is I'm going to come back here, and let's try companies, and we'll run script. And we will see if it stops correctly and if it pulls in all of our companies. And so what you can do this, actually, is if you come here to more options and you can say create update data set, we can run the script, and this will actually push a test data set out to our instance to make sure that it's run properly. And so now it'll say create data set and it'll link us to the data set. And I think I have, yeah, I was like, I think I have 200 companies around that in, in uh, my HubSpot instance. And so we can see here and we can take a look and inspect to make sure our data is looking good. And it looks like it's pulling in everything correctly. Um, what I always do is I always come here, take a look at this and then also come back to, to um, Postman and get companies and make sure it's passing in all the fields with the magic parse. And it looks like, yeah. Domain. So yeah, it looks like it, it, it looks like it's looking pretty good. Um, awesome. Perfect. So that's the last step of this step. And what we're going to cover in the next video, like I said, is how we self publish and then the review process where we'll, the third party connector support is going to come and they'll give us feedback and they'll email us. And then we will be able to submit our connector to the app store. So stay tuned.